Hey there friends, welcome back to the channel. My name's Alex Lokes and today I have another developer review for you. Yes, the grey days are upon us as winter settles in here in southern Ontario. So I'm going to be talking about Diafine. Diafine is the closest thing we have to a universal developer for black and white. So I'm here in McCraney Valley and let's keep going and I'll talk about the film I'm going to be shooting with you today. So today I have my Roloflex 2.8F loaded with Roli RPX100 and I'm going to be underexposing it by one stop by shooting it at ASA 200 because that's what the data sheet for developing it in Diafine tells me what I need to do. Now that doesn't mean that I have to stick to that but since this is my first time using this combination I'm going to go with what it says on the data sheets. And that's the key with Diafine. You need to look at the data sheets and see what the ideal film speed is to do your development. So let's get walking. I can do some shooting, show you the photos, and then we can continue talking at the end of the path. All right, let's go.
go. I've shot the entire roll. Now, before we head home and we develop it, let's head back to the studio. I can tell you a little bit more about what makes dye fine so special, and then I can do a demonstration on how I'm going to be developing this roll at home in the lab. Stay tuned and I will meet you back here. So at the start of the video, I described dye fine as the closest thing to a universal developer we have for black and white. Now, I use that term because if you've ever done home color developing, you'll know that it's the same set of times. It doesn't matter what films you have in the tank, if you've shot them at their box speed, or you don't want to have to worry about compensating and developing, you can have a roll of Kodak Portra 400, Superior 200, and a roll of Cinestill 800T, all in the same tank, use the same times, and it doesn't matter, they all come out. Diafine works in almost the same way, with a set of times ranging from between three minutes at the fast end to five minutes at the long end. Okay, so what does this all mean in practice? Well, if you've been browsing the massive dev chart, you're going to see a listing for various diafine times, and they're going to look a little bit different from what you're used to when looking at a time chart on the massive dev chart because on it, you're going to see things like D76, one plus one. And that generally means that you're going to mix one part of your concentrate with one part of water. So an equal split of concentrate or stock solution to water. So if you're making up 500 milliliters, you'll need 250 milliliter liters of your stock D76 and 250 milliliters of your water. Now, diafine does something completely different. Because when you look at a diafine time, you got and then you're going to see 3 plus 3. Now, if you're familiar with the math, three plus three is the same as one plus one. So do you mix up 250 milliliters of part A and 250 milliliters of part B? Well, no. The trouble is, is that unlike developers like D76, or more specifically, Pyrocat HD or Spur HRX, Diafine is not a two-part developer. It is a two-bath developer. Now, I've mixed up the terminology in the past, and I apologize for that because there is a difference. So, in a two-part developer, you have your bottle of A, and you have your bottle of B. In a two-part developer, you mix part A with part B. So, for example, in the case of Pyrocat HD, it's one plus one plus 100 is normal. So that means you mix part one of part A, one of part B, mix it with 100 parts of water to make your working solution. That's what a two-part developer means. You make one working solution to develop your film in, from two separate concentrates. Diafine's different. Diafine, you have part A, you have part B. You don't actually mix the two together to make your working solution. Each one is considered a stock solution on their own. And you develop your film first in part A, and then in part B. So that means when you see something listed, three plus three, that means you develop your film first for three minutes in part A, and then for three minutes in part B. So at this point, you're probably asking, what makes diafine universal? The thing is, is that diafine is designed to only work in these three separate times. Three minutes, four minutes, and five minutes. Now, there is some wiggle room 
in the sense that some are four and a half, some are three and a half. In some cases, the part A time is different from the part B time, but 98% of the time, you're looking at equal time in, in part A and part B. You're also going to start to notice that a lot of films you're going to shoot have a different listed speed from that of box speed. So, you put everything together. If you have, say, a roll of Cinestill BWXX you shot at ASA 640, you have a roll of Tri-X shot at ASA 1600, and a roll of Arista EDU Ultra 100 shot at ASA 200, you go to the dev chart and you see that they are all listed as being developed in Diafine 3 plus 3. That's right. You can now develop all three rolls of film in the same tank. And that's the key. With a bit of pre-planning, you can streamline and speed up your developing process so that you don't have to spend hours on end developing these three rolls in, at different times even if you're using it in the same developer. In today's developing session, I have three films to process, and I've made sure to shoot each of them in such a way that I can develop all three of them in a single tank, providing you have a tank big enough. One thing to note, do not pre-wash your film. So, Editor Alex here, and I know I said in the video that I could develop all three rolls in a single tank. The key being a tank big enough. Now, I initially thought that my large Patterson tank could fit two rolls of 35 millimeter and a roll of 120. I was sadly mistaken, but thanks to the cooperative efforts of my wonderful wife, we were able to salvage all three rolls by keeping everything protected, putting a second Patterson tank into my change bag and transferring the roll of 120 into my smaller Patterson tank and kept the two rolls of 35 millimeter, which had already been put onto reels, into my big tank. And I was able to develop all three of them, but in two separate sessions. And that just goes to show that big tank that I have will fit two rolls of 120 or three rolls of 35 millimeter, but won't fit a roll of 120 and two rolls of 35 millimeter. So just a quick aside, it may look like I'm developing all three, but I'm actually only developing two. All right, back to the video. One thing you'll notice about Diafine is that there's a clear color difference between parts A and B. When initially mixed, part A will be clear, but will change color, and that's mainly because of that anti halation layer washing off. Part B starts off as a light brown color and will get darker the more films you process. When developing, you pour part A in first. Give the tank two inversions or five seconds and then repeat it each following minute until the timer runs out. Then pour out and save part A. Without washing the film between, pour in part B. Give the tank those two inversions for five seconds and then repeat each minute until the timer runs out. Pour out and save part B. Make sure you keep parts A and B separated when measuring and saving.
It's not recommended to use an acid stop bath, so I let my tank stand under running, running water for one whole minute. Then, run through your usual fixing and washing technique. Now that you've seen what RPX 100 looks like in Diafine, what about some other films? The very first roll of film I processed with Diafine was an expired roll of Rolleye Retro ADS. And when I first pulled those negatives out of the tank, I knew I had shot that roll at ASA 200 instead of ASA 80. Not much of an underexposure, but for Retro ADS, it's quite a bit. And those negatives look normal, like normal for Retro ADS with compressed midtones, high contrast, and a narrow latitude. And this was what was repeated through a roll of Ilford FP4, Arista EDU Ultra 100, Cinestill BWXX, and Agfa APX25. They all appeared as if I had shot them at box speed and processed them in a run-of-the-mill developer. And when I scanned them, again, they looked perfectly normal for what you're used to from those films. You end up with images with rich contrast, fine grain, and even when the film is expired, but well stored, it looks fresh. And this is thanks to the fact that Diafine is the ultimate in compensating developer and has some solvent action to help knock back the increasing grain. The images look classic. And in post-processing, I had to do very little in the way of adjustment. They scanned easily and cleanly. And I think that's the whole deal. You shoot your roll for Diafine and Diafine will make your roll look its best allowing you to run through large quantities of film in a single developing cycle without worrying about the negative impacts of any push-pull development. And there you have it. That is Die Fine in a nutshell. Now, there are several reasons why this is not a developer for everyone. The first and foremost being availability. It is really difficult to locate Diafine. I ended up searching for several years before ending up getting it through Argentix.ca and I still only managed to snag the last kit that was on sale. Second, handling. I cannot hammer this home enough. You need to be incredibly careful and aware of where all your chemistry is so that you avoid that cross-contamination. And third is the cost. This stuff is not cheap, especially if you get the one gallon kit. You are going to be spending a lot of money. So with all these three things, it is not for your average beginner developer. It is really aimed for people who want to streamline their development process and are really good at pre-planning it. The plus side is if you have all these things in place, you found it, you're willing to spend the money and you are very aware when you are developing your film and are good at pre-planning, this stuff is going to last forever. So you will get your investment back. It has a very good return on investment for a developer if you are careful. So let me know in the comments, what are your experiences with Diafine? Um, do you love it? Do you want to try it and just can't find it? Or do you just want to avoid it because of the three reasons? If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and stay tuned after the credits for a little bit of housekeeping because we are at the end of this year. Until next time, shoot what you love with what you love on what you love. Don't give in to the hype.
Hey there folks, thanks for sticking around to the very end of the video. I just wanted to do a bit of housekeeping before uh, we wrapped it up for this year. So first of all, thank you so much to everyone who has watched, commented, and liked my videos. It means a lot, it's a really simple thing that you can do, but it just, it really does mean a lot to me. Um, so what's coming up for next year? Well, next year I am committing to producing two videos per month, just two, doing three a month it takes out a lot of space and it's really, really difficult. Also, just wanted to let you know that because of a change in releases for my blogs, I'm going to be releasing new videos on Wednesdays. Yes, so stay tuned for the new year. I got a lot of great content all ready to go and posted and yeah. I hope everyone has a wonderful holiday season, however you celebrate or however you don't celebrate. Keep it nice. And as always, shoot what you love with what you love on what you love. Capture those memories. All right. Take care, everyone.